And today we'll be speaking to two women who are part of the about 230 Ghanaians who were repatriated from Kuwait on the 23rd of May. Now, upon the arrival in Ghana, they were made to undergo mandatory quarantine under strict uh, security. And out of that, we had about 35 of them testing positive. And so they proceeded to undergo treatment. And I believe that after the two weeks, the rest were allowed to go back home. Now, in the studios today, we have Obahima and Obaya, who were part of those who returned to Ghana from Kuwait. And they're going to be sharing their story with us. And so good morning good and morning. welcome to COVID-19. I remember I spoke to one of you on Zoom yes. and it was, it was you, right? You. Welcome. Thank you. How long has it been since you left Ghana? It's been five years. Five years? Yes. Oh, so you must be happy to come home finally, <laughs> of right? Of course, I am. It feels good? Good. Yeah? Home is sweet. Okay, how about you, Oba? Same. You are Oba, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Same, Same five, five years. years yeah. what, what took you to Kuwait? Was it work? Yeah. Okay. Right. So you were there for five. Okay, fine. Let's move on. Anyway, let's talk about mandatory quarantine and how it was like when you returned home. What was the yeah. treatment like? Yes. Um, to me, it was okay. Everything was okay. Mm. They treated us good. I was okay with it. You were okay with it? You were okay there for how many weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. All right. So the moment you touched down? We were drove straight to the place, Pram Pram. Was it a hotel? It wasn't a hotel. I learned it's... Um, the formal... It's a school. Something oh, it was like a school. school? Yeah, it was a school. But it was comfortable at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eating means it is means sports. Oh, so both of you were there? Yeah, we were there. Both what was it like? I mean, what was your day like when you were under mandatory quarantine? Uh, when you wake up early morning, you go for a test. I mean, check your... Vitals. Oh, every morning? Every, every morning. morning. Okay. Every morning you do that. And then after that, you go for your breakfast. Mm. And then everything was normal. Okay. Normal until this um, test result came out. When did they take your, your samples? The, the, day, sec the, the, day, second the second day. day we came. Oh, the second the day. The 24th. Came. Yeah. And how long did it take for the results to come out? It took like um, four to four five, five days. days. Okay, did it all come at the same time for everyone? No, no, no not the same time. Oh, different came, times. Yeah. So yeah. when did you receive yours? It was, it was on the same day, but not on the same time. Okay, the when you say same day, they took your sample the and then. Fifth day. The fifth day is yeah, when you received your results. Were you received. scared? Of course I was. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You'll be scared when they call someone. Uh -huh. They mention the name like, Oba Hima, and then you are shaking. Yeah. What's happening? What's going on? Uh -huh. So after they take you to the room and then they explain everything to you, and then they tell you whether you are positive or you are negative. So for the people who are positive, what, what happened to them? They did they not took, understand. They took them. Some did not understand Some that they were positive. When you said did not understand, yeah, because um, we were because all they, looking... not, they did not provide any test results, and that brought the problem. Wait, when you test me, you have to give me my results. They didn't give you the results, no. so even for those of you who tested negative, no, they only told you. We don't know. We don't see any results. And that is the, the results truth. came at the end of the two weeks. That's when they gave you what, a letter. That's when they gave you the results that you've passed. You've gone what through the you two are? weeks and you are safe. Okay, so but at the time on. they were breaking the information to you that you had tested no, negative, we did no not document. See any document. Did you not request for it? We did. Some of them even fought with them, but nothing. The wow. Reason, the reason why they fought with them was we were thinking um, we, we have to see their symptoms, mm -hmm. like what they were saying, running, um, temperature, coughing. Okay. Before you believe that you have it? Yes. But there was but nothing like that. Later, they explained to us that. So later, they explained everything. But oh, so pr then, prior to that, you didn't know that asymptomatic patients... No, we didn't know. We, we didn't, didn't know, know it was like that earlier on. It was later we realized it wasn't like that. And that was because you saw someone exhibiting symptoms? Or we didn't nobody see show anything. Nobody. What happened to the people who tested positive? Did they bring ambulances to take yes, them? Yes, they yes, yes. There was ambulance standing by ambulance, ambulance and, and then they, they took them straight to Kaswa. Okay. Are so you in touch with any of them to know whether they are doing yeah, well? Yeah, someone called me yesterday and said perhaps today they'll, they'll be, be going, going home. home. Oh, they'll be going home? Yes. Did she tell you what kind of treatment they were giving them? I... I I'm not there, so I wouldn't know yeah, much. Yeah, but you said you spoke to her, so that's what I'm asking. That maybe did you have a conversation about that? Yes, we did, but she said all is okay. It's okay. What will you do? It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> but what was it like finally reuniting with your family, knowing that you don't have COVID-19? You've been asking on government to bring you home for so long, and now it was time to go home. 
Mm. You cannot you cannot imagine the joy, the happiness because it's been a long we have been in quarantine in Kuwait for one month. And a whole here, month? yes, a whole month before we came here. So it has been a long time we be since we we outside from Kuwait, mm -hmm. we were in isolation center in the Kuwait before we came here. I mean one month and two weeks before we get home. So it's why did they have you in isolation in Kuwait? Was it before after you, you come had... in, before mm -hmm. you come to the airport anywhere, they isolate you. But they had tested you and already. And they test you. Okay. Before you go to the airport. So that means that you were you even able to communicate with family whilst you yeah, were yes. okay. Everything yeah. was fine. Everything was fine. Everything was okay. A whole month. A whole month. And then it delays. Not because the Kuwait government wanted to keep us for a whole month. Mm -hmm. No. But our government here, our the, the airport, the airport closed was closed and, and the borders were closed. For us to that pass is and come the home. problem. That's, that was all kept at for. Oh, that's I see. Yeah. But then you opted to come home, right? Yes. So there are some Ghanaians who are still there. Yes. Yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot of them. Are yes. they asking to come? No, we I don't, don't know. Think so. But I wanted to come. So. so tell me the process. When you said you wanted to come, what did you have to do to be part of the group that came to Ghana? Okay. The Kuwait government is an uh, amnesty. So uh -huh. whoever wants to go home, even they put you in the process, you'll be registered, your ID and all those things. And then they will take you to the quarantine place. Mm -hmm. So we passed through all these procedures for, for I think, from 26th of April mm. to 30th of April. That was for Africans. Ghanians, for the Africans. For Africans. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so we did everything and we were waiting for the government to open us so we can come home. Why did you have to pay to be part of the group? No, we it didn't. was all free. It was all free. Okay, all but free. if it wasn't for COVID-19, would you have still wanted to come back home and would you have come earlier? For me, okay. I wanted, for let, me, let for me, I was ready to come home before the COVID started and then the lockdown. So I couldn't come because of the lockdown. So you had already bought a ticket and everything. I I, I nearly I nearly did it, but when I came when I came home from work, and then just four days the lockdown came. So I called the embassy and they said I should hold on. Mm, okay. So whilst I was holding on, and then the government also said there's been an amnesty. So if you want to go, then so I had to come. join them and then. What about you, Abahima? Yes. Were you already planning to come home? And if there wasn't coming? I even did my uh, TC, which is travel certificate. Oh. I wanted to come, but not this time. Not this time? Yes. I wanted to this? come in December. Yeah, but, but since I was home, yeah. I stayed home for three months. But why did not, you want to come back home? Because I was not working. Because of the virus, nobody... We are all back home and we are not because working. Because of the lockdown. Because of the lockdown, you You're cannot go out. Go anywhere, you cannot so. do anything. So it was affecting you? Yes, of was course. Was the government not providing any... Not all of us. For his Only people. For his for people. His people. Yes. And for, did you have the documents or your documents had expired? Um, for my, me, my or was expired. Yours as well? Same, same. Okay, yeah. so then in that case, you were considered illegal yes. migrants. So yeah. they were not helping you in any way? No. They were. They in were, the way they were doing it. How? The way Tell they were me. Doing it, um, the embassy there was also helping. They've hmm. been coming around where the, the Ghana Ghana in the, where the Ghanaian community are mm. to provide some food and then stuff and then they, they were helping. So you received some help from, from them? Personally, Personally, I did not, but people received it. So how were you surviving? <laughs> I had somebody with me, so okay. I, was, I was able to. How were you surviving? Mm, actually, I was staying at the accommodation for my company. Okay. And so they were providing for us. Oh, okay. So you didn't have to pay for rent no. and all that? No. 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 All right. No. Okay, that's great then. Now that you're home, what's going to be happening? What are you doing? What are you planning on doing? A lot. Do you want to go back to Kuwait at Some people, point? me, I would want to go back if I have the opportunity. I you would, would want to go back? I would want to go back if I have the opportunity. But I wouldn't want to go with the same visa I went with the first one. What visa was that? That was visa, visa 20. 20. Uh -huh. Break it down for me. For someone who that, doesn't know what that visa is. That visa is working in the house, like a house made of, yeah. And then, okay. and then we have the visa 18 for the companies. So okay. if I'm supposed to go, but I will want to go with the 18 visa. 
so you can work for a company. company or you don't want yeah. to go back as a, a, no, a worker no. as why? a house help. Why? Tell me why. Well, you don't have a freedom on your own if you the like, like is you, should, you know, like if you're a house help, you can't do what you want to do every time. Someone has to control you. Control like you. Do TV this. Remote. Don't go here. Don't go. You don't have. But at least they were paying you well. They were paying you well, yeah. Okay, yeah. you weren't being maltreated in any way? No, Not no. at all. For me, no. Okay. I was okay. The people I had, I was staying with were good. Everything okay. was okay. All right. But yeah. you had a visa 18 then, because you said you were working with a company. I didn't have a visa 18. What did you have? I had visa 20. But okay. <laughs> I have some friends and then I communicate with them. I don't want to do this visa 20 job anymore. So I wanted to change my visa to visa. 18. Okay. So I got a company where they wanted to sponsor me for my visa. Okay. But this is where this whole virus started. Mm -hmm. So I was working with them, though I was using my visa 20. Yeah. So the visa 18 and the visa 20, I learned that now the visa 20 is not working anymore. Okay. They stopped issuing they visa stopped 20? It, yes, they stopped issuing it because when they take you home, some Everything people. is not working. I mean, they, they said the labor law in the country is not working for those working in the house. And that is a problem we have in Kuwait. We okay. want somebody to speak for the majority of the Ghanaians who are voiceless. Uh -huh. the, the, the visa 20 and the house working, the labor law doesn't work. Okay. Why? When somebody is working in Kuwait, he's supposed to be every, every, every week at least one day off. Mm -hmm. But when we are working in the house, that one day off is not working. Mm. No. Secondly, they take your documents from you, your passport. The your moment passport, you get there? Yes. They your take passport. It just as you arrive from the airport. From the airport. The person who brought you take your passport and everything from you because she or he sponsored for you. He, she, or, she or he is your sponsor. So that is where we have a problem. Okay. Now that Nanado has brought the embassy for us, we want the embassy to do the needful for us. But did you explain to the embassy what the embassy like is it? aware of all this? They are aware. Okay. Because when somebody arrives in Kuwait, even when my first one I was having a problem with my employer, I talked to them. I, mm. I went to the embassy and talked to them. Mm. They did not do anything. They did not say anything. They only asked me to go back to work for them or I pay them the money they are requesting for, mm -hmm. which is not logic. It's not law. Wow. So we want the embassy to talk for us. Mm -hmm. We want them to fix, to make everything fix, like stronghold, like we are the Ghanaians. We have somebody for, for, to talk for us. And we if they fix somebody. it, would you go back? Of course, even if they fix or not, <laughs> if I get a chance today, I will go back. You will leave. Don't you think that you can start something in Ghana? We can. Hold on on that thought. <laughs> we'll be back <laughs> to continue this conversation. It's COVID-19 360. Welcome back. It's still COVID-19, 360, and in the studios I have Obaya and Obahima who are part of the about 230 Ghanaians who were repatriated from Kuwait on the 23rd of May 2020 as a result, of course, of COVID-19. We'll also be speaking to another stranded Ghanaian in the Netherlands. We spoke to him some weeks ago and we want to do a follow-up. And so they're saying that if they get an opportunity, they'll rather go back than start something here. That's actually from Obahima. And so tell me that briefly. My time is up so we can... Wrap up. You're telling me that you'd go back if the conditions are better. Yeah, if what the about, conditions are better. What about Ghana? You don't want to... Ghana is my up. home. Ghana is my country. I have a family here. So I love to stay here. Okay. I love to stay in Ghana, but... Would it not have been better if there was a pandemic and you were already in Ghana? I mean, looking at the situation, are these people are able to go back to work? They can make some money, even though we're being asked to protect ourselves. Yes. Is it not better instead of being in someone's land? It's better. That's why I came. Yeah, but you're because saying you're I going here, uh -huh. I know here I can move on one here and there and make my own profit. Until there's an opportunity yes. to go back. What I'm about right. you, Abaya? Are we, you say you're going back. Isn't there something <laughs> here to do? There is a lot. There's a lot you can do? There's a lot we can do here. But you can't compare the home what because of 
how much you make there? Of course. Okay. Of it's course. better there. It's better there. Mm. It's better there. Okay. If you were in Ghana, what would you have been doing? I'm a seamstress. I'm a, a fashion designer. You're a fashion designer? Yeah. yeah. And you don't think that you can make more here than in Kuwait? <laughs> I'd rather be there. Okay. You'd give yeah. up your fashion yeah. design work? To work I'll have to go and organize home. much more money and then come home and then establish a big time. I see. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. moving forward, how are you protecting yourselves? I know there's no mask and all of that. Mm. By washing our hands, sanitizing our hands, mm. doing as our president said, we're doing it and that is the only way. Okay. To well, we hope that you stay safe and thank you, you don't contract the virus. Thank you. We want to say and something. Yes, go ahead. Um, we want to thank the Kuwait government. We say thank you a lot. For the how far he has brought us. You have to thank the Almighty God for how far he has brought us because it's been a long way to Ghana here. And also, we thank the President of the Republic of Ghana and the Health Minister and all the protocols that make the quarantine safe for us. Mm. And also, we thank the Ghanaian Embassy in Kuwait. They are trying their best, but at least their they best should. Is not enough. Their they best is not, not enough. <laughs> we want them to try hard for us. But Ghana has tried for you because imagine course, if you had to course. pay for a ticket and also. But pay for Ghana did not pay the ticket for us. Please. Kuwait government. Well, I mean, yes, sorry, us. it was taken care of by Kuwait, but mandatory quarantine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was 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 for the government was so at least Ghana also tried. Yeah, that's why we are that's thanking all of them yeah. for making this a successful travel into our home country. Absolutely. And we thank you, TV3, also. For the interviews, for the you know you are Making most it part of it for us, for us to because we were calling when we were in yes. there, when yeah. we were crying, we were, we were calling, calling what we were is concerned. going on yes. and the whole lot. We so thank, we thank you, you so, so much. Thank you and as God well bless for coming you. on oh. and stay safe. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Well, that's about it for today. Oh, don't leave yet. So relax. <laughs> that's it for today. COVID nineteen three sixty, and we do hope that uh, you know the cries of people who are stranded abroad will be heard by government. Not everyone can foot the mandatory quarantine bill, looking at how high the figure is. And so, government, if you're listening, if you're watching, please come to the aid of your citizens.